morning, everybody. Um, little known fact of myself, as a kid, uh, ever since a kid, I've always had a fasc fascination with airplanes, uh, flight in general. Everything from old warplanes to commercial flight. Uh, whether you have flown, will fly, or have a fear of flying, um, today I'm going <clears> to <throat> kind of inform you on the principles of how such a large airplane can stay in the air. Uh, new commercial flights, they can range anywhere from average flight weight is about 64 tons or 128,000 pounds. Pretty large. <laughs> um, so basically there are four principles of flight. Uh, the first one is lift. Um, lift. Um, how many people have stuck their hand out a car window when it was driving and changed the angle and the arm goes up and down? And everyone's done that as a kid almost. Um, but you've what you have experienced is the simplest form of flight. As it states in the Enigma of Aerodynamic Lift by Ed Regis, lift was originally described by Daniel Bernoulli as a consequence of the curved upper surface of an airfoil, or simplest term, it's an airplane wing. Because of this design, the idea goes, air traveling across the top of the wing moves faster than the air moving along the bottom, which creates lift. Bernoulli's theorem states that the increased speed atop the wing is associated with a region of lower pressure. Again, that's where that comes from. There are several shapes of, of airfoils or wings of an aircraft. Depending on the speed and purpose of aircraft, the wing shape will change. But Bernoulli's theory still holds true and science understands that due to that shape and due to the low pressure on the top of the surface, there will always be lift. The loss of lift is what we currently experience as turbulence, which causes the plane to drop and rise suddenly. Uh, a crazy fact that I found was, um, according to the article Flying by Beth Howard, she states that around 40% of people have a fear of flying or an anxiety. Anything from crippling panic attacks to just pre-flight jitters. Uh, turbulence is a big factor in that. The next one is thrust. Uh, thrust is the force created by a type of propulsion used to drive any vehicle forward. Uh, many types of engines were used throughout history um, when airplanes were just canvas wooden cables. A piston engine, just like in your car, it would turn a wooden propeller to pull the airplane through the air. As time progressed and airplanes got more complicated and started way more, engines had to produce more power and piston engines had reached their limits. At that time, the jet engine came into service and um, revolutionized, revolutionized aircraft travel. Uh, planes that could only reach three or 400 miles an hour could reach now upwards of 2,000 in some aircraft, 2,000 miles an hour. Um, thrust uses Isaac Newton's third law of physics, which for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Um, with a new jet engine, as you can see on the right there, air is sucked in by a big fan, basically. Uh, as it tapers down, as it gets to the back, fuel is injected into the air, it's ignited, and as it compressed, as we all know, when things get hot, they expand. Well, anyone done the Diet Coke and Mentos trick? <laughs> as it comes out, it gets faster. Uh, same principle out there. Um, next, we'll get into weight. Um, weight is a gravitational pull on, uh, against, against the body. At the early onset of flight, uh, back in 1903, the first aircraft that took flight weighed six, just 600 pounds. It only traveled about 120 feet, roughly 10 feet off the ground. Uh, its maximum speed was 30 miles an hour. On my slide, I did put some famous or some notorious aircraft through history. Uh, the Wright Flyer, that's the first powered flight. As you can see, 604 pounds. Um, 1917, World War I, it's 926 pounds average aircraft. Uh, World War II made a pretty big jump to 6,000 pounds. Uh, 1947, the Jet Age, 13,000 pounds. And you can see the 
15, it increases as well. And then 1966, the SR-71 Blackbird, uh, maximum speed at 2,200 pounds. Uh, it's 85,000 feet high. That's on the edge of outer space, pretty much. Uh, average commercial jetliner nowadays, uh, aircraft weight is 90,000 pounds, uh, 530 miles an hour. It's kind of amazing to see 120 years of flight, the change of change of things. Current aircraft weight, um, maximum takeoff weight is 120,000 pounds and cruise at 517 miles an hour. Uh, at that altitude, the air is so thin, um, their engines are really fuel efficient and the cost does not reflect that though when you try and book a flight. <laughs> they like to charge for it. Uh, drag is the final principle. Drag is best described as the resistance of forces pulling against the vehicle in motion. Any body in motion, for, uh, any body in motion fights the force of drag. Take a rocket for example. Traveling straight up, it not only fights the force of gravity, but also as the speed increases, the force of drag against every surface on the leading edge increases as well. Uh, one way that engineers found out to reduce drag is to build an aircraft that flies at a higher altitude where the air is thinner. When the air is thinner, there's less resistance as well, which results in drag. And there's my drag. You can see the four forces. <laughs> and I also threw a good one on there for. <laughs> um, so, in conclusion, uh, again, the four basic principles of flight are the same from the first flying aircraft, which that's. That's it right there. You can see it's just wooden canvas. The pilot's laying on his belly. That's how he flew. Um, the same from the first flying airplane made by Orville and Wilbur Wright to the most current line of passenger airliners, even though they are far from similar design and characteristics. Science and technology have also come a long way since the days of the pilot laying on his belly in the airplane and only going halfway down the football field to now being able to fly across the world.